the box? What's in the box? Oh, what's in the box? All right, here we go. Welcome to Bob's Basement Toy Blog 22, or 22, as I'm calling it in the title, because I have to keep thinking of something creative to put in these titles. Um, we have a big episode today. Um, this is a special Thor the Mighty Avenger box. There are no Thor toys in here whatsoever. Um, but this is one of those really cool things that Hasbro sent me that would have Thor product in there. So I did get uh, Mignor, I got a bunch of 375 figures. It was really before the Black Series really took over. So there were no Black Series figures included in this. It was more of a kid's box. Um, but I had fun with the stuff. I still have, uh, still have the hammer upstairs in my son's room. Um, and it lights up, has lightning blast, the whole thing. And then what you can't quite see, now I've, I've moved this box, but I'm dealing with a monster Home Depot box that says Marvel Legends Star Wars Black Series. And I think it says, it says Diamond Select on it as well. So we're going to do a lot of Hasbro, some Diamond Select. I'm sure most of it is going to be some Marvel characters. Really going to get into this and see what we've got today. So I've had a special request from a friend of mine, uh, Larry Smith, who is a fantastic cosplayer in New Jersey, who's uh, bunkered down, staying safe, hopefully. Um, but I mean, if you needed a mask, I'm sure he probably would have shown me, you know, shown you one in like two seconds, because the guy is a, a fabulous uh, tailor. Um, he sent me a box of da -da 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 -da, Star Wars action fleet ships. Now I have uh, he's, he included a lot of the cards, but they were all loose. So we got an X-Wing, we got a TIE Bomber, we got a Snow Speeder, a TIE Fighter. Um, he sent these to me as a gift, as a, as a thank you for being just a great friend, as the kind of guy he is. And um, when I worked at this one uh, website design firm, which is this one right here, it's the hat I wear from Neo Pangea. So if you need a website design, if you need some sort of creative, just craziness for your business, Neo Pangea is the place to go. Um, while I was working for them, every month, it was such a creative place. You always wanted to keep the juices flowing. Every month, I would change my Action Fleet ship on my desk. So there would be a TIE Bomber. There would be uh, the Rebel Blockade Runner. Um, we'll get through these here. Um, there would be Darth Vader's ship. Uh, each one of these, and they come with... I got a full bag of stands, which was awesome, because each ship came with a stand. So I would change these every, every month just to keep the creative juices flowing and I'd see a different toy every month uh, if there was a theme if there was something that you know going on um, these ships would change now the neat thing about these ships is they all came with little micro machine style figures so there's a little Darth Vader in there but some of these got really elaborate I mean look at this TIE fighter and they're to scale of each other um, I would say the 10 and 4 probably is not to scale um, nor is the walker um, but these ships are to scale all right, to each other. Um, so those are very, very cool. Um, it's a, It was a neat series. Um, I don't have them all. Um, here is just, I mean, Larry is so cool. He literally put like all the little guys in a vehicle. Um, here's another, yes, I have yet another Slave One. There's a Boba Fett in there. So very cool series of, of action figures. There were play sets. Um, there were even creatures. Here's the Rancor. And you could put, a guy in his mouth and then pull him out the back so a very awesome uh, thing that I believe uh, this was Galoob that came up with this so this wasn't even Hasbro this was Galoob so after Kenner lost the rights uh, to make Star Wars figures um, and you watch all this in the toys that made us uh, Lucasfilm was able to go out and uh, you know, they had to renegotiate a contract with Hasbro, which was the new company now that owned Kenner, and they were able to make let anyone make toys. Um, so uh, you got Galoob, you got Lego. Um, all of a sudden, all these toy companies started making different things at different scales, different sizes. It's a snow speeder. There's two pilots in here, and then even then, the little air flaps come up so that you know, in the this was to slow them down. So look, I mean, it's just a fabulous set. Even got a. AT, ATSC in here with the driver. If you need it, uh, it probably came with a driver. Probably didn't come with Chewbacca. That would have been neat if it came with Chewbacca. But there was a Millennium Falcon in here. And then, of course, my favorite Star Wars ship, the Imperial Shuttle. So, that's awesome. Um, I don't have them all, as I said. There's a couple that I'm short on. Uh, but I do keep them. I have kept them since I got them from him. I've been keeping them in this Thor box. 
It's just a way for me to find them a lot easier. Like, there's a Thor box, there's a ship. Um, uh, when I left the tech firm um, and I started working for Total Toy Recon, I actually, the only ship I've taken with me is the X-Wing. So Luke's X-Wing is the one that sits on my desk at work. Um, so that's, you know, I, I want to get back, now that I found the box again since I moved, I want to get back into the habit of changing the ship out every month. It's, it's a nice little thing to do. Um, it keeps the, co the collection fresh. Um, makes it fun and then I appreciate the gift every month and I change it up um, for a while there when I was working at the at the at Neo Pangea we had lots of uh, we had lots of crazy days where we would do like oh we're going to all go see Star Wars today um, it was so the boss could talk to it talk to everybody about it without anybody worrying about spoilers and I would literally it was changing the ship like every week so it would be an X-Wing Millennium Falcon it just it was really it was, it was a lot of fun so here is a mega box that I packed in probably sometime last year, about this time, as I was getting ready to move. I knew that my wife and I were expecting our first baby, and we knew that we were going to move. So toys started to get boxed up and packed away in monster boxes um, so that they would be ready to move, and I would just have to pull the box off the shelf. Um, I'm going to say hi to Dave and Gene, who are both watching. They live in the same house, but yet they're watching on separate computers, which is very nice of them. And, uh, wow, we've got some uh, different stuff here. So we're really going to get into uh, some different things. Now, uh, wow, there's a lot more in here than uh, what was said on the box. Uh, so one thing that I really wanted to get uh, into were Marvel Legends. I do have a lot of Marvel Legends. However, I'm starting to pack them up now in an official Marvel Legends box. It makes it easier. It's identifiable, and I know what it is. So I can stick the likes of Hawkeye. Now, this is, this is a Marvel Legends from the Odin Wave. So this is from nine. This is from 2015. So I can just stick him right in the box. Perfect. It's a box that's made for that shipping of that product. So that's why I really wanted to start getting into some of these. So this was a gift. Um, this is the Mezco 112. Um, uh, Frank Miller's uh, The Dark Knight. He's not in here. He's actually upstairs. But it's nice to know where the box went because I was really looking for the thing. I was like, where did that box go? Um, Fabulous toy. If you can get into 110, uh, 112s, uh, really articulated, lots of great details. These are put out by Mezco, um, a great uh, thing to start collecting. And you can kind of pick and choose. Some people are obsessive, like they have to have all the DC guys, all the Marvel guys. I just get who I really want, like I can't live without. Um, and then they have their own line of action figures too, called the Rumble Society, which is just their own take on things. And it's, it's really fun because... It's that whole thing when you get a new toy and you had no idea who the guy was. He was like introduced in a line and his story hadn't been told yet. You could go anywhere and do anything. And that's what's cool about the Rumble Society figures. So here is uh, a Namor that I got as a gift. Well, not as a gift. Well, technically as a gift. Uh, when I went to Toy Fair two years ago, uh, they gave me a brand new Marvel Legends Namor. It's a fabulous figure. We have it reviewed on our YouTube page. Um, so that's cool. I'm glad I got him. I'm going to put him in the sort later pile. That's what, if you can see it, that's what my new little uh, rainbow shelf over here is. Bring this into the shot a little bit more. These are things that are going to get sorted and put into another box. I had a little container. The container is full. I've really got to go through it and start matching up weapons and things. So, um, I'm a big fan of, uh, I'm a big fan of villains. I really like bad guy characters. And the reason for this being is that there was always like 30 G.I. Joe heroes and then there were three bad guys. So you got like Cobra Commander, Destro, and then a soldier. And you were like, well, that's it. And the Joes were always going to win because there were more guys. So I always felt like it was good to buy every villain possible so you actually had a decent matchup. So um, this is from uh, DC Collectibles, now called DC Direct. They changed their name back. And this is uh, the Reverse Flash based on his appearance in The Flash, uh, the TV series, uh, the current one. So, uh, actually, I haven't caught up in a while yet, but I've actually heard that he's come back. He was dead, and then he found a way to, through time, he came back. Very cool figure. I, I like the reality of the figure based on the, uh, based on the, um, the TV series. Uh, this was uh, the HasLab uh, Jabba Sail Barge postcard that they gave us all at Toy Fair when they announced it. I did not get the Sail Barge. It was $400, and I regret it to this day, but it literally would be behind me with no place to go. So somewhere down the road, hopefully, 
I can get the sail barge. Um, so we did do a lot of the Indiana Jones figures, which we have a box set back here in the corner. Those are all the Raiders figures, and there were several figures that were missing uh, from my collection in the box in which I found them. So here is the Cairo Swordsman. So this is a must-have figure. This is the one that Indy shoots. Um, that's a cool figure. And then here is... Oh, there's tons of them in here. Great. Here is uh, Monkey Man. So that's that, that's that guy. Now, if, if you know Raiders of the Lost Ark, you may not know that the actor who played the Monkey Man, the, the Nazi spy in Cairo, was also the guy that betrayed Indy in South America at the very beginning. The guy who pulls a gun on him and then Indy throws the whip. That guy. Yeah, at the very beginning. It's the same actor, which is awesome that they, they were able to use the actor in two different roles. I mean, they put a beard on his face, put an eye patch. But if you want to go one step further... This is the bad guy in the original pilot of Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, the actor. He plays the guy who steals this little thing that Indy sees as a kid and then as a, a late teenager, early adult, stops. It's a great episode of the pilot. Um, and here, wow, we've got more. Here's, um, here's Belloc in his um, ceremonial outfit from the end of the movie. So they did make a lot of these Raiders figures. It was just harder to find them because... Uh, one, collectors were buying them up like crazy, and then stores stopped carrying them because the line was a bust. So anytime I went out, all I ever found was uh, Crystal Skull figures. So here's Marion, comes with a, a, the big sword, the red outfit, and then, of course, she has the big uh, pan from the, uh, from the basket chase scene. So that's awesome. So I think I may have every Raiders figure to date. I think I the Raiders figures I have. All right, so this was a uh, this was a Walgreens exclusive Ant Man. This came out during the first Ant Man movie, and it's based on his uh, really kind of quick appearance in the movie that you just barely see him. But uh, no extras whatsoever, no build the figure piece, no extra hands. Um, really cool figure. I got this as a gift from Jared Cruz uh, when I started writing for him. He sent this to me as a as a thank you. Um, awesome figure. So hold that onto that. All right, so this one's going to take a second to explain, but I think I'm just going to leave him where you guys can see him for the time being. So what's up with the leprechaun? All right, uh, somebody's in here. Another plastic bag. Oh, wow, okay. Please say the hat is in here. All right, so I found bits and pieces of this guy at a toy show and this is the Kermit the Frog uh, Indiana Jones figure um, and I don't have all his parts unfortunately he does not have his gun and he does not have his whip but his what I stuck in his in his whip holder is actually it's a it's a mock-up of the fertility idol but it's the great gonzo um, so I actually have that piece but I need, I probably could just put a standard revolver in there and be fine and then make the whip. But one thing I really like about this figure, I mean, there's a lot of things, but the, the cool part is the hat is held on with a magnet. With a magnet. That was clever because you know the hat's going to fall off and you know the hat's not going to stay on. But if you put it on with a magnet, it's a whole other level of cool. So definitely this guy's going to have to get... Uh, wrapped up and taken care of uh, classic figure and two pieces to finish to get to him. Uh, Hasbro sent uh, gave us these back in 2018. This was their um, Mighty Mugs. This was the modern version of the Mighty Mugs. So here's the original from the uh, early 2000s and then this was what they re-released to combat uh, Pop because Pop was just dominating the market. Um, I preferred this because it's slightly bigger. The neat thing about this is, and they did these for Star Wars, Marvel, and a couple other little properties. Um, you press the head down, and his face changes. So we've got Red Eye Vader uh, with a sort of a smile, sort of an anger, um, all kinds of different looks. I mean, I love Darth Vader, so that's why I kept that one. It was nice that they gave me one. I think I had Princess Leia and a couple others um, there were given. Oh, so here is... Um, now, I've been really gathering up all my Black Series figures as we go. So here is uh, Luke Skywalker as a stormtrooper, um, a great figure to uh, army build on because you can put the helmet on and then it's just Luke. 
but uh, they've I don't think they've well they've re-released him but with wet hair that was the only thing that they did and we showed him a couple episodes ago so neat to find Luke again here is a Fantastic Four flame on Johnny Storm um, so this is a a complete red almost translucent Johnny Storm uh, from Marvel uh, Legends line I think he was a Walgreens exclusive and he is from 2016. I think he was a Walgreens exclusive. But see, the problem is they don't put the Walgreens sticker on anymore. They do for some and not others. So not exactly sure where I got him. It was four years ago. So it's a little bit tough to remember. So very cool figure. Um, who is number 58? So here is Ray Island Journey. So this is Ray from The Rise of Skywalker. Got this as a, um, as a Hasbro uh, swag bag. It was nice to get a, uh, a Ray figure, which I would have gotten somebody else because she is everywhere. She is the easiest figure to find. Um, number eight. So these guys are awesome. And you see these in the Rise, in uh, Force Awakens. Um, these are Guavin Enforcers. Um, so it's basically kind of like a bounty hunter, like stormtrooper kind of figure. Um, you could have like 10 of these and it'd be awesome. Um, kind of easy to find now and then at Walgreens. They're still floating around. They didn't have much screen time. Um, they were right. They were the group that was trying to take back. Uh, they were trying to capture Han Solo when Finn and Ray Ray meet him in the Force Awakens. So there's a whole bunch of these guys. Um, that's a neat figure, though. I like it. So here is the counterpart to the Black Series Luke. We have the Black Series Han. So these kind of are like bookends. You kind of need them both. I don't think they've released Han yet in this size. Um, no Han yet in this size. Uh, I'm sorry, no re-release of Han in this in, in this look. Um, but they have done Luke with wet hair. And it's a better sculpt. It does look better. So, Okay, so, got this. A little dusty. This is the Target exclusive Imperial Death Trooper, Captain Kazian Andor, and Sergeant Jin Urso. This was a three-pack that Target had. I got this for $9 because they put them on sale. Now, the, there's two cool things about this. One, this is the best Captain Kazi and Andor figure you could want. Um, the the regular figure was him in his like almost like his polar jacket with a hat, and it's a really lame figure. That figure was everywhere. You can still find that figure from time to time. Um, the Death Trooper, this one is slightly different. Comes with there was a standard one. He's very skinny. Uh, they're all skinny. But he didn't have nearly as many accessories. This one has grenades. He has all kinds of bandoliers and stuff. Um, this Jin Urso, you can still find her anywhere. Uh, one of the guys uh, uh, found him uh, for three cents. And there was someone else had posted on Instagram once. He bought 20 of them at uh, a Walmart and had them for three cents a piece. Three cents. That's what her figure was. And when they put out the exclusive of her, everybody went nuts. Because it came in a special green box. That's the only one worth, I think worth anything. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, this is a uh, Death Squad Commander Black Series figure. They did re-release this figure with a much better face sculpt. Um, but this is things that you get when you order from Amazon. Why, 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 why is that necessary to put that on there? I mean, granted, it's not on the package. I got a better chance of getting it off of here than I do if it was on the cardboard. But I've been saving this one to open. I think I have two or three of these. Um, but really disappointing. I love the retro packaging, which was really disappointing that they did that. Um, so here is the Darth Vader uh, 40th anniversary box set. Now this was in the style of the early bird packaging. If you don't know what the early bird packaging is, back uh, when the movie hit, in the original movie in 77, the toys were so popular. Uh, well, toys would have been so popular, but they didn't have any. So they made a box that you could order. The, you got four figures. It was Chewie, Luke, Leia, and R2. And you sent this away. And then it was Kenner's way of making money with no toys. And then you were sent the figures once you got them. So this was in the in, Lu, uh, in spoof of the early bird packaging. You get Vader in here. They're re-releasing Vader with a much better sculpt. Uh, more articulation. And then this also gave you... A little this modern day version also gave you a little stand style that you can put all the original figures all the figures that are based on the original releases on it so that's pretty nice these were going I think these were 50 bucks when they came out 
and I've seen them as low as 12 now. Every once in a while, one pops up again. But it's interesting that once the market gets fluctuated, they sit on the shelf and rot. Then they go to like a warehouse, like bargain place, like Ollie's or Burlington Coat Factory or Ross's or TJ Maxx. Then they're bought out. Then everybody has them. Then this whole second, third wave of collectors comes along and says, I really need this. And then the price goes back up again. So if you can catch the wave where you can find them really cheap and then jump, you can really make some decent money down the road. But you have to sit on it and wait. Uh, who is number five? So here is number five in the Black Series. Uh, this is Chewbacca from The Force Awakens. They've released, uh, re-released Chewbacca a bunch of times now. Um, probably the most recent is the Solo, um, uh, the Solo a Star Wars story. It came with goggles and a different bandolier and a different gun. So it's neat. Glad to have them. You always need a Chewbacca. Um, ah, here we go. So this is the Toys R Us exclusive hover tank pilot. Um, these were literally rotting on the shelf at Toys R Us a year before they closed. And then as soon as all of those things started to, things like this started to drop in price, uh, they just disappeared. They were gone. So once they got around to the $9 area, these figures disappeared. I believe I have two of these, maybe three. Um, this is, this is the original Darth Vader released for the Black Series line. You can tell because it's the blue packaging. So once... Uh, we do have orange packaging floating around somewhere, um, but this box to this box, big change in difference. I don't know if you can see that, but this also made it tough uh, on collectors because we now have a lot less box, which is good in the long run and saves Hasbro money, but collectors uh, had plastic cases to keep these in, and now they needed all new cases. So you almost wish that Hasbro would just put it in a plastic case to begin with. Wow, okay. Um, so, oh, Total Toy Recon, we did do a review of the world's finest Justice League uh, loot crate. It wasn't official loot crate. It was in the style of it. Um, let's see if there's anything left in here from it. Um, well, I use it to repack stuff. So we had German Soldier. I think we really may have every Indiana Jones figure at this point. I just keep putting them over there. Um... Some fun stuff in here. Some weird stuff. Okay. Um, these were Infinity Gauntlets that came out during the first Avengers movie, and you had to buy all these little knickknack things, and you opened up the box, and you got a different stone, or you got a hammer or a weapon from the movie. Um, we were give we bought these for like a buck fifty at Target, and we were giving them away uh, on Total Toy Recon's live show. I must have kept one for memory's sake. Got a Green Lantern Planner in this set. Odd thing to have, but got a Green Lantern Planner. Um, I think it just looks like the Green Lanterns. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Let's put a little plant in there. Nice. This was a cool set. It came with a uh, flash jacket, reversible, so it would look like this. It would look like this flash over here. Um, that I keep in my desk for cold days at work. It's really hideous. But in a fun way. So, uh, we got a Batman belt buckle in here. That's still in this box. And then uh, a pin, um, enamel pins of all the different Justice League members' logos. It's trash. Drop mix card. Remember those? Nope. Oh, and an enamel pin uh, from the Living Dolls Medsco collection. That's nice. Stick that in there and sort that out later. So some cool stuff. In so there was a cyborg vinyl figure. There was the Lasso of Truth card. There was a Lasso of Truth USB card. A Superman art print. The belt buckle. This thing actually holds business cards but it's gold, but I actually wear it. So there it is. There it is, and you put your business cards right in there. Actually, nowadays, that would make getting my 
going to the grocery store a lot easier. That's kind of neat. So I'll probably put that in the purge pile, those items right there, and uh, go and get rid of those things. We've got a lot more stuff in here, so please bear with me. It's a longer episode today. This is one of my all-time favorite things. This is the Sand Speeder uh, from the Black Series uh, collection. So we saw the Dewback earlier that a, a Stormtrooper could ride, but this is Luke's Sand Speeder. I'll show it here. There was a Comic-Con exclusive version of it that came in a special box, and you could see the whole thing. These uh, these average at fifty dollars. They came out during the Force Awakens, and it was the second vehicle you could get. There was the Tie Fighter, which we will see on this show. There was the big Tie Fighter, and then we will have. Um, they made the Sand Speeder. So there was Biker Scout bike, of course. So it wasn't really the first vehicle. You could say this is the first two-person vehicle in this size. The, the ship itself was pretty big. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm really tired. So. Um, these, like I said, were about $49.99 uh, when they were at stores. Barnes & Nobles had them on their website as of last year for like $9.99. They were trying to get rid of them. Um, these also turned up at Ollie's for, I think, like 16 bucks, if not less. So, I mean, the figure itself, they're selling the figure for $5.99 and then a regular one of these kind of figures for $5.99 and then they're selling this somewhere for like $10 to $12.00. So the interesting part about that was at the same time, now this is number two, the giant TIE fighter is number one. Here is Ray's speeder. So these were kind of like a bookend set. Like you kind of wanted to get both of these that came out at the same time. But I mean, this is a hundred dollars. I mean, if you go, if you go to Target, you score both of these, you're dropping a hundred bucks. And for some fans, it was like, you know what? I can buy a lot more things for, I can buy five of the Black Series figures for, for that price. Why would I want two figures and two vehicles? And I don't even think Ray's helmet comes off. So you, you kind of need both Ray's. Um, I'm glad I got both of them. I got them, I think, for $9.99 a piece. I scored them at, um, I think it was TJ Maxx had them. So it's all just a matter of finding the right moment and playing the waiting game. And the waiting game is something that a lot of toy collectors nowadays do because you get to a point where there's an oversaturation in the market of an exclusive. Uh, Walgreens, if if you go to the right Walgreens, um, sometimes Target um, will have an exclusive and they have so many of them that if you buy it at full price, you're kind of foolish. Like if, if it's a figure you really, really want, you really like the character, buy it. If you're a completist and can't live without it, buy it. If you're like, He's cool then it may be worth waiting is this i did for this guy um as i did for the not this chewbacca but the chewbacca target exclusive from solo he was 19.99 i waited and waited and waited i got him for nine dollars um then a figure that you're like eh, i'm okay with you know having it or not having it then it's like oh look this is cool and you actually kind of like it more i got a lot of the solo figures that way i don't think i bought I bought one. I bought the, store, the 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 mountain trooper. I bought him the day day he came out. Um, he's easy to find now from time to time, but no other figure in that line that I pay full price for. None. And it just wasn't something I was going to do. There wasn't a figure that I really liked from the movie that I was like, yeah, I got to have that guy, uh, except for the stormtrooper. Um, so the, the character characters, yeah, I just waited. Um, so let's get through these quick. Yep. What did I say? two of them and i'm sure i'm almost a hundred percent sure there's a third one in the other room so three of those bad boys my original han solo from the black series now this is what i was saying earlier if we see this line so we have we have a blue one yes so here is this is the original this this is how the black series came out or initially this is number Eight. So he was in the second wave. And then they relaunched it with blue, with a blue wave. So this is the Chewbacca, the re-release of, this is the first release of Chewbacca in this size. And he's actually like a seven and a half inch figure. And then they mixed it up and did this. So then they started the numbering all over again. See, each one has four. And then uh, his number's on the back, eight. And then what they did with these figures was they thought, oh, we'll get really clever and we'll put numbers on the side. 
so that you could just line them all up like this and say, oh, I need six, I need seven. But then they started doing this, no number, because that was an exclusive that you can only buy a certain store. But what they should have done was they should have put T1, as in Toys R Us 1, Walgreens 1, Target 1, you know, or, or put a Target symbol on there or something that would signify where it came from. Uh, Bespin Luke, he's getting a, a re-release, thank God, because this figure, the face, th this was before the photo real technology that they're using now to make everybody really look like who they're supposed to look like. So, yeah. Uh, TIE Fighter Pilot, awesome figure. Got him in a uh, Hasbro swag bag. Uh, my wife would go and take photos uh, and video while I would do the interviews, and she got a swag bag out here and got the TIE Fighter Pilot. Very nice. Uh, Captain Phasma, I got at least two of these. She's now, uh, this was the figure that we got at uh, the very first Force Awakens Force Friday when they relaunched the whole thing. Got her the next day, went and found her at uh, Ross's, had, had Coles, sorry, Coles had brand new figures. So we ended up getting her, couldn't get her at Toys R Us, she was sold out. And then here is, this one will never get open. This is the original uh, Boba Fett from the Black Series line. He was number six. So he was actually numbered before Han Solo. What does that tell you about popularity, about what people are willing to buy? So we did see the uh, Star Wars one. Um, we did see the Star Wars uh, exclusive uh, from um, Star Wars Celebration 2 and Comic-Con a little while ago. We give a shout out to Akira who's watching. What's up, man? Um, yeah, I collect a lot of scales. I do. I have a lot of different scales. Um, but part of this, Akira, is that I'm actually figuring out what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. Bye-bye. So I'm working on that. Um, Masters of the Universe figure. Wow. This box is awesomely packed. And that's who I thought it would be. So Maddie Collector were doing high-end. Uh, these figures were 40 bucks a piece. They were doing high-end Masters of the Universe figures. Um, when does this one come out? I'm going to say like 2010, 2008. Um, Stratos was one of my favorite characters on the show. He was the action figure I always wanted, the, the He-Man line. In, it's so weird I can do that. Uh, in this scale. I wanted Stratos in this scale, but never got him. Never could find him. Um, so, uh, I got Stratos, ordered him, uh, from Mattel. They came in these awesome boxes. So, would Stratos probably get go into the purge? I'd have to be offered something for Stratos, I think. Um, it seems weird to keep these figures when I'm really trying to thin the herd out. Um, but the boxes are awesome. They used to say their names and then they stopped doing that. I guess they figured they could make more, save more money doing the boxes. So here is a 112 collective Mr. Spock. Now I'll show you what a 112 looks like since this one's actually in the box. So this is a highly articulated uh, action figure. Now these these average about somewhere between fifty and hundred dollars, depending on how many accessories they have or the size. Like a bigger figure like Thanos or the Hulk is going to be closer to hundred dollars. Um, Jarrett Cruz gave me this as a gift. Um, I did not have a single uh, 112 figure, and he got this in his Mezco swag bag when they gave you a random figure. The only problem with Spock is um, he does not have a single weapon. Um, but the outfit is very cool. The clothing is all real. They did make uh, Kirk and Sulu. And I don't know if they made uh, Bones or McC uh, Bones or Scotty. Um, so it was a nice, very bare bones figure. But it was the first release of the Star Treks. They didn't go too heavy duty on these. Um, he is from 2016. So a figure means a lot to me. Never get rid of this. And uh, I've been tempted a few times to open him up, take him out of the pack. And actually um, uh, put his uh, put uh, Mezco's uh, figurehead character Gomez the the uh, the bug put him in the Spock outfit. I just th think that would look cool. Um, <laughs> uh, Akira says he is working on getting his toy grails. All right, well let me know what your toy grails are, Akira. Maybe I can help you out here as long as the shipping isn't too far. And I'm sure that. I don't know if Akira is your real name or if that is a name you just used based on the movie, but let me know. Uh, last box. Last box. Last box in this mega box. So this is from Big Bad Toy Store. I ordered a case of Star Wars 6-inch Black Series. This is Series 1, Case Set of 4. 
So, this is, this is, wow, this is the original, these are the original four uh, Black Series figures in pristine boxes. So this is Darth Maul. I can't believe that I have not found this box in her. Luke Skywalker. The boxes are insane. Um, the Sand Trooper. And, of course, R2-D2. These are the original four figures from the line. They are still in the box that they came shipped in. So this is like... This is like getting an original, like, uh, like case of wine that was from, like, you know, from a great year. Um, to actually have them still in their box that they were shipped in. Uh, they haven't seen daylight. They're in fantastic shape. Um, this is something that probably down the road I could probably trade for, like, my son's uh, first year of college books. Or buy a new computer for. Because they are in fabulous shape. Um, they're in a big bad toy store box. Um... They have all kinds of logos on them and stuff. So this is probably, if I look at it, Spock may be very rare. And we'll wrap this up here. This Spock may be rare. So for Die Hard 112 collectors, getting a Spock of this nature without all the extra accessories, they did re-release him as a Mirror Mirror Spock. Um, this, is a, this is a rarity. You're not going to find this too often. And it was handed out as swag. This is probably the most valuable thing in the box set uh, inside this box because of how pristine and preserved these figures are. So that is something I'm definitely going to have to hold on to. But these original Black Series figures in the orange and blue, um, they are something that I definitely have to keep track of. I can't really display them this way or this way, so they kind of have to go out straight like this. It's funny because I could stack them all here and know exactly who number six is, but you know, it's one of those oddball things that Hasbro did and really should just take some of the weight off the Vader case right here because that's what I have these sitting on. So this is nice. Like I said, that goes up. Um, the Black Series is, for me, probably the most dangerous thing about collecting. Uh, their figures are 20 bucks a piece. You know, these are these are $20. And you didn't even get into that. And then they released the Black Series in vintage cards. So you didn't even have, you know, this figure was re-released in this box, but if you really were a fan of Star Wars and you wanted the 40th anniversary collection, you had to hunt down all of these figures. They're doing this with Empire Strikes Back, and they're doing a lot more of them. Um, and then in 2023, we're going to see Return of the Jedi. So we got that whole other line of figures to deal with. So it's a dangerous, dangerous hobby, collecting toys. Um, I love the Black Series figures. Because I, you can do great photography with them. You can really build a world around the six-inch scale. However, uh, the Star Wars figures that I have that are the 375, just like Indy, that scale is what I have the most of. So when it comes down to it, those that scale of those figures, like the Death Star here, that will never leave. But it's you know difficult to know where to draw the line and what I'm going to keep. So... Uh, this is Bob again at Total Toy Recon. Let me ask you, let me let me go through a couple quick questions here. Um, Akira says that he is looking for a 12-inch Inspector Gadget, used but complete. I think I know what he's talking about, so that's pretty cool. And then uh, my friend Dave uh, said he loves the Spock. He's never seen one of them before. As I said, Dave, um, if you want, I can look for one for you at RetroCon, if RetroCon actually happens this year. Um, these kind of figures to uh, toy uh, retailers in the secondary market, sometimes they just sit on the shelf and they collect dust because nobody really wants it. It's an eclectic little niche of collecting Star Trek. Not that it's little, it's big. Um, but you may be able to find one at uh, a, a show like RetroCon. Um, MJ found a Space Ghost in the 112 and got him for like 30 bucks. And now that figure's like $150 because it went crazy. Everybody suddenly wanted Space Ghost again. Um, why that happened, who knows? But one guy was trying to get rid of stuff on the last day of the show, didn't want to pack up the boxes. That's how you got to sometimes strike and get a really good deal. So, again, Bob from Total Recon, 
Thank you for tuning in. I'll be back again tomorrow. Um, I think I'm going to get to one of these tubs behind me if I can, because there's things that I'm missing. I have a Snake Plissken Movie Maniac that I found at Goodwill less than a year ago, and when I moved, he got wrapped up and packed, and I've yet to find him. Some of this stuff here has been packed up for well over a year. We've had other things that have been packed up since like 2010, and we're just really trying to find that stuff. Where where did certain things like go? I have a, a pop from Flash Gordon that I cannot find. Where did he go? Um, so we'll find him eventually. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. Have a good afternoon. Stay safe. Only go out if you have to. And please wear a mask. Um, be safe.